Yeah, start oh, from the beginning. All right, so the question of the day is, do you think Lizzo is beautiful? I mean, yeah. Lizzo is hot. I give her a count of 10. Do you think Lizzo is beautiful? Yeah. Lizzo? Yeah. Do you think Lizzo is beautiful? A hundred percent. She's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Do you think Lizzo is beautiful? <laughs> yes, I think Lizzo is beautiful. Yeah, Lizzo, cute. Thank you. Okay, that's valid. That's valid. Okay, so we're here with Molly. What Molly, just happened, guys? Ever told you that you look like Lizzo? Hey, guys, what just happened? We just lost like everything. Lizzo. You have a guy. Can we back up? Let's go ahead and stop the video. Are they backing up? Okay, so so we just missed the best part. Can we go back up just a little bit? Yeah, back. All right, put it back Zero in. Right, let's Real try it again. Bad. Ready? Okay, that's valid. That's valid. Okay, so we're here with Molly. Molly, has anyone ever told you that you look like Lizzo? What? You look like Lizzo. You have a guy. You have a guy. <laughs> what? I, thought, what? I thought it was a compliment. All right. <laughs> Does anybody anybody have any initial thoughts when you see that? Well, I mean, he did research. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> anybody else? At least he knew who she was. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so here's the thing. It's like this is part of the lunacy. Like when you ask women if Lizzo is attractive, they're going to tell you yes <laughs> because they need to be inclusive. But if you tell a woman she looks like Lizzo, they slap you. It's an insult. So it's true. an insult. But it's not. It's not. It's because we don't live in objective reality. We live in a subjective reality where it's like we need things to feel a certain way instead of dealing with the, the way they are. So, for instance, there are many aspects of, of female attractiveness and male attractiveness that are not subjective. They are objective. Hip to waist ratio, uh, facial symmetry, clear skin, signs of youth, these things like universally, if we were to survey men, billions of men that they would agree that these are the things that they like. But in order to say that there are objective things that men find attractive, then you have to say being morbidly overweight mm. is not and in doing so, then you would say, Lizzo seems like a great person, probably a great musical artist, but she is not attractive. And mm -hmm. so for you to say that is just so, I don't know, uh, politically incorrect, antithetical to egalitarianism. I don't know what it is, but like, it's not just that. It's, it's also, what are you promoting? The, mm -hmm. the level of, for those of you who are old enough to remember this, anybody over the age of 40, we were not this fucking obese 30 years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, I do yeah, yeah. not understand how things have gotten so out of whack. We're just walking around, by the way, walking around New York, I didn't see that much obesity because people have to walk a lot. Mm -hmm. But everywhere else I went, like in the airport here in, my, in uh, Las Vegas, just the level of obesity is outrageous. And I know you guys mm -hmm. think I'm exaggerating, but if you could mm -hmm. just look at videos of people going to spring break in like 1995 on like MTV, no one was obese. And now it's just, it, we've just got to the point where the food that we eat is just destroyed. Destroying us. So now, instead of sending a message that might help people, I'm not saying it's a good message or a bad message, but it might help people, which is like you probably should eat better. We're told instead that Lizzo is beautiful. Yeah, I was going to say is. And by the way, this stuff, when you when, when these guys are doing these man on the street questions and stuff, that question was straight off of Fresh and Fit because yeah. they use that question like several. That's where this is or, For sure. originated from with the same with the same response. Yeah, I think that. What's what's interesting is like when they ask the girls, and they did this on Fresh and Fit. They'd ask the girls, they would say, you know, do you think Lizzo is beautiful? Yada yada. They would have to go because it's correct for them to say that. So especially if one of their friends says, oh yeah yeah, and then the next one goes, well yeah of course I can't believe you wouldn't even think she's not beautiful. Blah blah blah. And then they say, well, what if I told you you look like you, you look like Lizzo? Yeah. Right? Then suddenly you're calling somebody. It's like synonymous with calling somebody fat. Yes, and it's like the they can't see the dissonance. The mm -hmm. funny thing is he he asked a separate woman. She said, do you look like Lizzo? Uh, and instead, he should have just asked the girls he was already saying that look like that is Lizzo's beautiful. It's oh, that's interesting because you look like Lizzo mm -hmm. to just see how that they would accept it as an insult because mm -hmm. the dissonance doesn't seem to like exist in their mind. Mm -hmm. They just don't seem to grasp it. Amanda, what, what do you think about this? I think the women were trying to be politically correct, mm -hmm. and I think that there are so many beautiful aspects in her personality sure. and the way that she embodies herself, and I think that that's very powerful. However, in society, we are visual creatures, mm. and that's just part of our humanness. So, I mean, aesthetically, it doesn't really fit the mold of beauty, and there's certain scales to, the, like, the guidelines of, like, the Fibonacci code, sure. et cetera. Yeah. Um, right, so, so, so the thing is, uh, it's, it's those numbers come from a place, and those, that place comes from our 
our evolution. Mm -hmm. Basically, if we were to look at what is the hip to waist ratio, and I know this was a criticism in that video that mm -hmm. came out the other day, but it is true. If we're looking at the, if you were to survey thousands of men and say, what hip, hip to waist ratio do you prefer? It's between 0.68 to 0.72. And if you look at women who are the most fertile, guess what the hip to waist ratio is? Anybody want to guess? It's exactly. 0.68 to 0.72. And if you were to take men who were blind and had never seen a woman in their life and ask them to haptically create with their hands the shape of the, a woman that they would that like hourglass? it ends up mm. being 0. 0.68 to 0. 0.72 blind men so, <laughs> oh no no this is these are western beauty standards mm. these are standards just they're forced upon no it's know. genetics mm. it's evolution and it's very offensive to a lot of people and, and the reason why you know it's offensive again that video that just came out the other day she has to put on funny glasses and make funny noises in order to try to get her point across because mm. the reality of the situation is that evolution has a lot to do with what we're doing. Now, uh, with why we are the way we are. Now, it's not everything. It's not everything. But the part of evolution that doesn't have to do with why we are the way we are, that part was also shaped by evolution. Mm -hmm. Meaning our society, the society that we live in, look, guys, we're not, we, we don't have like huge blaring ass lights in here or, or it doesn't smell like sulfur in here. Like we have created, we've adapted. Look at these, look at this seat I'm wearing that's got lumbar support. My, my, my car has got lumbar support. <laughs> like this thing is not like strangling my ears. Like we've built a society that was based on like the human body, right? Mm -hmm. the, what makes us comfortable. And so that's where a lot of those things come from. But that whole idea, Idea is offensive to a lot of mm -hmm. people. Can we uh, can we get my screen on real quick? There you go. I wanted to point this one out. I, I don't think I've ever put this on the on screen yet. This is 500 women selected uh, their actual and ideal body size from a 12 point visual scale. Now you can see the the various shapes right there. Say so they also chose the body shape that most closely matched their own from apple to hourglass. Now the average. This is the this is according to CDC and Census Bureau like data. Okay, so this is not like just this is not cherry pick shit here. So we've got uh, weight. The average weight of a woman in the United States is 172 pounds. Hell no. Their average ideal is 124. Their BMI is 29 and a half. Now, people kept saying, man, you need to round that up to 30 because of the height, but okay. Uh, and then you can see that the uh, average ideal is 21.3. Uh, average self-confidence out of 10, 6.1 versus 6.9. And then you've got percentage of men who think this body is visually ideal is 9%. Uh, and then the average ideal, of course, is 36. And then uh, women, uh, percentage of women uh, with this body who want to lose weight, 91% of them do. Something to sort of keep in mind during this I'm, whole thing. I, I, one of the th I like what you said really quickly there. I th think because um, you separated values, okay, because... And this is something that we well, we do in the manosphere. I've done for quite some time right now. What happens when we talk about sexual market value versus like personal worth, right? Mm -hmm. So when we start talking about a woman's value or man, like a high value man or high value woman or something like that, I think we tend to conflate that with, oh, does that does that guy look like a male stripper? That's a high value man. Okay, well, we can, there's a lot of there's a lot of qualifiers that go along with that. But when you say a woman is a a 10 or she's a seven or she's a six or whatever else it is. And you're trying, you're trying to quantify what the sexual market value of that woman is. I don't think enough people really realize that we're not talking about like you're a bad person, right? I mean, mother Teresa was a very good person. She has a lot of personal value, but she's probably not going to be that high on the sexual market value scale. So we're separating those two. And I think that a women have a, even the women that were interviewed on this, on this clip here, have a really tough time separating sort of their intrinsic inherent worth as a human being, as a person versus whatever their, whatever they, you know, their sexual market value sure. might be. And in this case, we can see that, you know, what is it? I think it's like 75% of the U S population is either obese or overweight yeah. right now. So, so th this is where the, the ma major difference. And I want to hear what mm -hmm. you guys have to say, especially you as a nutritionist. I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, what happens is, a as a man, if you play quarterback for a football team or if you're a cardiologist, the things that make you professionally viable also make you sexually attractive to the opposite sex. If you're a cardiologist and you're a female, the things that make you sexually viable are not the same as the things that make you sexually uh, to the sexually attractive to the opposite sex. And one of the difficulties that happens is the female cardiologist, she's going to be looking for men to date that are in her same tax bracket and her same education level. But the problem is those men are not are looking back at the female cardiologist, but they're also also looking back at the younger women who are not cardiologists who don't have a degree and are just hot and so there's there's this competition problem that ends up happening and so that's where the difference become comes and so so if I had a, if there was a female cardiologist and she saved one of my family members life she would have incredible value to the world but it wouldn't make me want to date her more does that make sense